Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's Theological Leftovers. I want to read to you from something that I read on Sunday from Matthew chapter 5, part of the Sermon on the Mount, just after the Beatitudes in verse 14 and following. Jesus says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. I wanted to share with this with you. I know it's a very familiar verse, but I wanted to share it with you because uh, as I was reading it on Sunday, um, I had an image pop into my head uh, of a, a book and a movie that um, it didn't fit in with what I was preaching, and that's what Theological Leftovers is all about, is when something like that happens, I have a place to share it with you, um, just something a little extra. And and the image that I had was this. Well, first of all, I mean, you understand what it's saying. I mean, Jesus has already talked about the fact that you are blessed because the kingdom of heaven has come in him for you. And, and so you, as this person who has been blessed with mercy, with Jesus coming for you, uh, with the whole kingdom being given to you, you now are called to be great for your neighbor. And, and so that's kind of where this is going. This is the, the, the turning point after hearing the Beatitudes. Um, this is the kind of the, the first... Um, this is the statement, and then we have lots of examples. So you are blessed you are called, and then what follows is, here's what your calling looks like. Here's what it means to be great for your neighbor. Right? So, um, anyway, you're familiar with all of that, and the whole idea of being light to the world, and the idea is people see your good works, and they glorify God in heaven, right? Um, this means a whole bunch of things. It could mean encouraging your brother or sister in Christ who needs encouragement. It could mean uh, reaching out to someone who is uh, wandering, and, and by your good works, um, you know, encouraging them back, or even your, your good works, um, your acts of love, um, helping people to see God in this fallen world who are unbelievers and ultimately um, coming to Christ. Of course, this is always the work of the Holy Spirit, but God works through means, and you're one of those means. You are called to be light. Um, those are all sort of the images that, that we normally think about, because honestly, as pastors, that's normally what we talk about. But the, the, the image from a book and from a movie that popped into my head uh, as I was reading this was something completely different. And I think it's because of the shift in our culture, because of some of the hostility, um, not completely, but some of the hostility that exists uh, towards Christianity, um, towards God and His Word and our Savior. Um, when you are light, it's, it, in fact, Jesus says this. He says, um, it, like, it's just sort of a given. Um, when you light a lamp, you don't put it under a basket, but you put it on a stand. It gives light to all in the house. That's what you do with the light, right? Light is intended to enlighten, to reveal, to, to help to see. Um, and that's good. It's good for everybody, but not everybody necessarily appreciates it, Right? But everybody sees it. And so I started thinking about the people who see the light, you, the light of the world, but don't appreciate it. And the image that popped into my head was from the Lord of the Rings, uh, from the first book in the trilogy, uh, when the hobbits are on the run, and they're running from this these just dark, evil creatures that are after them and after the ring called the Nazgul. And and they um, the, the, the hobbits are, are no competition for these Nazgul. They, they would destroy them. But the one thing the hobbits go have going for them, or one of the things they have going from them, is they tend to be overlooked because they're so diminutive in stature. They're so small and, and um, seemingly inconsequential. And we don't normally think of that as a blessing, but it is because they're able to avoid detection. Um, and they've done that very, very well um, with the help of a ranger, Strider, right? But there is a point where, um, I guess you could say in this case, one of their weaknesses um, is they love to eat, and they're hungry, and they decide to light a fire. And when they light the fire, they're on this place called Weathertop, this high place, the hill, right? And below them is nothing but flat plains. 
And so when they light that light on that hill, guess what? Um, they can be seen by the Nazgul who come um, and who attack. Um, this is one of the realities of being light to the world. Not only are those who will believe or be encouraged by the faith. Um, hang on just a second. Well, that's embarrassing. I forgot to put my phone in the drawer there. Sorry about that. It was a, an electronic call, so I got to talk to a robot. And uh, I left you. Um, what was I saying? I think I left you right where the, the, the Nazgul were about to get the hobbits. What a terrible place to leave you. But the reason they found them was because they were a light on the hill. And I share that because, because as you are called to be light to the whole world, the enemies of Christ are going to see you, and, and they're going to attack. They're going to come after you. And, and that wasn't something we talked about in the sermon, um, but it is a reality. And I think it's tempting for us to be intimidated by that kind of scary news, especially when we feel like hobbits compared to the Nazgul, right? We, we can't fight them, and so we should hide. We should avoid them. But we are called to be light. So what a, a, a sticky predicament um, we're in. But see, Jesus has already addressed this in the Beatitudes. Um, he's, he's pointed out our weaknesses, all of them, being spiritually bankrupt, to being um, meek, being the ones that perhaps are, are trampled upon in the world, um, hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Um, this, is, this, is, um, this is who we are. So he's acknowledged our weakness, and yet he confirms we are blessed. See, we're blessed not because we're of our strength. We're blessed because Jesus has come, because the kingdom of heaven has come for us in the person of Jesus. And, and so this addresses um, whatever fears we may have to be light and to, get the, um, to gain the um, attention of the enemies of Christ. We don't have to be afraid of that. In fact, Jesus said at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, so just a few verses before, he says, you are the light of the world. He says, blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Blessed? Yeah. Yeah. Despite all of our weaknesses that he's talked about before, despite the fact that being light is going to draw the enemy that's stronger than us right to our front door, despite all of that, he says... Jesus, the Savior, God, says, you are blessed. In fact, he goes on, he says, rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Right? So there it is. The victory is guaranteed. The kingdom of heaven that has come for you is yours, and great in that kingdom is your reward. We do not have to be afraid of the attention we may attract by being light, by being faithful to God's word, by being faithful to one another, and by loving our neighbor well. The rest of the Sermon on the Mount describes how to love your neighbor really, really well in a way that the world cannot understand and cannot even comprehend, in a way that will draw many people to ask questions to seek to understand why we act the way we act and who it is that we follow, who it is that we serve. So I encourage you to, to read. I said this to the congregation on Sunday because we didn't read the whole thing. Read this. You have a sermon from Jesus, right? From the Son of God. You perfectly preserved to you and handed to you. It's three relatively short chapters, Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. Please, if you haven't yet, read the Sermon on the Mount. And understand this is how it all begins. But there's much more, much more. No, oh, the only other thing that I have is, uh, again, I want to remind you that um, this Sunday, um, everything is planned to be normal at Concordia. But July 30th um, is when the Synod, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, has its conference. And I'll be at that conference. And I could not find a pastor to take my place. So rather than having services here at Concordia, we are doing something really cool, really special. We are going to join forces, so to speak, with our brothers and sisters in Christ over at Our Savior. Um, if you would like to, um, 
to be a part of the large group that's going over there, please let the church office know or sign up when you're here at Concordia so that we can give them a heads up in terms of how many people are going to be there. All right, please make sure uh, that you let us know so we can let them know. So they're, um, we want to be a blessing. We don't want to be a shock. <laughs> All right, so, uh, so please make sure that you, you let us know that you plan to be there. Um, otherwise, as usual, um, please keep in mind our worship service is at 1030. We have Bible class before that at 9 o'clock. Starting in August, we're going to be doing a study on sharing God's Word, um, kind of evangelism, talking to the people in your life that you may be um, scared to talk to, or maybe you've tried and, and feel like it's gone very, very poorly. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about what we have to share and how to go about doing that, um, maybe the rest of the year, um, because this is important and it's something that we all struggle with. So we invite you to please consider joining us. Um, that starts in August. All right. God bless you all, and God bless your week.